Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you're joining us from. Welcome to the Duke Environmental Leadership Master of Environmental Management or Dell MEM info session. My name is Benjamin Spain. I am the Associate Director of Enrollment Services here, and I oversee the recruiting and admissions for the Nicholas School Master's Program. We're excited to have with us today Melissa Dragna, Michelle Shope, and Naima Aziz. The Dell Faculty Director, Rebecca Vidra, is traveling but we hope she'll be able to join us towards the end for the Q&A. Uh, as we get started, let's have everyone introduce themselves, please. Mel, would you please lead off? Yes, thank you so much, Ben. My name is Melissa Dragna. I'm the program coordinator for the Dell MEM program. So I'm the person who kind of does a lot of the scheduling for our events and supports the students throughout their time in the program. I'm the first port of contact for many of our students, um, and it is a great joy to work in the program. Hi, everyone. Um, this is Michelle Shope. I am a Dell MEM graduate, uh, 2016, and um, I enjoy uh, getting on these these info sessions and, and answering any questions folks may have. I'm active duty Coast Guard right now, and I'm transitioning out of the military next summer. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Naima Aziz. I'm a second year Dell MEM student, I'm hoping to graduate in May. Um, currently, I work for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service with the Office of Law Enforcement um, and overseeing the wildlife inspection program. So why do students pursue the Dell MEM degree? So first of all, the Dell MEM degree is designed for mid-career professionals that will allow them to develop transferable leadership-driven skills, a transferable leadership-driven skill set. Um, and we know many people enter the degree for different reasons. It may be that they're looking for advancement in their career to that next step, or maybe they're pursuing a passion that they've been un that has been unavailable to them at that point. So the skills that students learn in our program will be something that they'll be able to apply presently in their career or in their future career and help them reach their professional goals. The other reason students pursue this degree program is it's different than other online programs because of the coursework that's completed, there are, core, there are components that are online and we make sure those online components are highly interactive. And then our in-person sessions allow students the opportunity to build deep connections with their classmates that allow, the, allow them to use those um, relationships as resources throughout their professional career. Also, the Duke name travels. So worldwide, our alumni are known for their, their professional success. And people who um, meet with our students know that they've completed a challenging and rigorous curriculum that has prepared them to be environmental leaders in the field today. And finally, our cohort model is a little different than other online programs in the sense that our students build these highly high connection and relationships that add to the breadth and depth of their of their program and the relationships they build in the cohort carry them throughout their professional career often we find our students are meeting up outside of class space and even once they graduate we we regularly hear from our students that they're having lunch or collaborating on projects and i think that that's something that's really unique to our distance program so the program requirements so this program it has a minimum of 30 credits that students take to earn their Master's of Environmental Management degree from the Nicholas School of the Environment at Duke University. Our Dell MEM degree is offered through the same accreditation that our MEM degree is offered through. Um, and many of the faculty who teach within our program are our are, are MEM faculty as well. In addition to being the same accreditation, the program is highly innovative and flexible and it's designed for working professionals. The program should be completed in four semesters within a two year period. Normally a student will register for two to three classes per semester and during those, the two years of the program they'll partic participate in five short intensive place-based sessions throughout the Durham and um, other Duke campuses. The curriculum. So one of the things that I mentioned earlier is that we have amazing faculty who work within our program and the Dell faculty feed directly into the strength of our program. We have a core set of Nicholas School faculty who have been trained and feel passionately about online learning and they they've been participating in the program since its inception. The courses are taught by primarily are primarily taught by regular rank faculty at the Nicholas School and our specialized courses are taught by faculty who specialize in those areas at the Nicholas School. 
all of our master's project advising is done by primary faculty at the Nicholas School. So on the screen you can see our curriculum. This is a snapshot of what it will look like for incoming students in the next cohort. As you can see, our program is a very interdisciplinary curriculum. The core courses are required for students and they provide a strong foundation in, for our environmental managers and leaders and we feel like these are the, this is the kind of content they need to have. Our core courses include ecosystem science and management, economics of environmental management, environmental law and policy, and program management for environmental professionals. In addition to this course, the, these courses, we require all students to take a one credit professional writing course. This course is focused on teaching students how to write in academia, as well as teaching them to become more clear and powerful writers. Michelle, at this time, I'm going to ask you to talk a little bit about the curriculum. Do you believe that the course variety was appropriate for you and your cohort? Yes, um, they, there were quite a few of us who, um, who really took advantage of all the electives um, that were offered, as well as the, the core classes. Uh, obviously, we had to take those, but, um, but we really dug into a lot of those. But I do believe that, uh, that it, the curriculum was, was broad enough that it, it, you know, everyone um, in the cohort, um, regardless of diversity and, and backgrounds, could apply what they were doing to the courses that we were taking. And that was kind of the beauty of those courses is that they weren't so strict in, in the topics we were discussing. We, we had the opportunities to apply the information that we were working on to our current line of work. Thank you so much. Yes, that is correct. So we try to give um, a wide range of specialties too, um, based on student interest. So we will work directly with our Nicholas School faculty. And if a student is interested in a specialized area and we feel the, the faculty member will provide a good service to the students through virtual connection, that is something that we, that we try to do for students um, when appropriate. So thank you so much for that response. So the other thing that I think is really unique about our program is that we have these field trip courses that happen every spring. Um, these courses will travel to different areas throughout the United States, um, as well as locations like Chile. And during those times, it's an, an excellent opportunity for students to take an elective course that will deeply invest them in a short period of time in those locations during our spring break. While these courses are not required because sometimes schedules do not allow travel, many of our students do take advantage of these field courses. And it's a wonderful opportunity for a primarily online program to meet in, set in person in a different location. And I think also it allows our students to collaborate with people outside of the program. So sometimes we'll have people from the P our PhD students at the Nicholas School and even undergraduates participate in those field courses. Also, our director, Rebecca Vidra, teaches a course on um, coastal restoration in Hawaii every other year. So it's a great opportunity to get to spend some quality time with her as well. Every student is required to complete a master's project. Um, this project is the goal of the project is uh, allows students to address an original idea or a novel or a question that is in a novel context to allow them to develop research skills. So these projects could be anything from covering a lit review um, and case studies doing data analysis and policy analysis. And this allows our students to work one-on-one -on -one with faculty who are experts in that area and that subject of interest. And many of our students have built lasting connections and um, collaborations within their, with their MP advisors. And so I think it's a really great opportunity to really delve deep into that area of interest within the program. Next, I think we talked about this earlier, but one of the things that makes our program unique is that we have this place and space based model. So students come to campus and meet in person, um, but then we also have these highly interactive class sessions each week. So Naima, can you talk a little bit about the bonding that occurs during those place based sessions and how those space based sessions are interactive and engaging? Uh, yeah, I sure can. Um... I think the place-based sessions are strategically timed in the beginning and end of the semester. So um, in the beginning of the semester, uh, especially during orientation, 
um, you meet your cohort, you meet the second years, um, you start bouncing ideas off of each other, and uh, you start your classes. So you actually meet your professors in person before you take the learning online. So you can kind of get a feel for the style of the teacher. You go through the syllabus, you can ask questions and set expectations for the course. And then um, you normally end your semester um, online, um, in person also. So during the semester, you have some group projects or presentations that you work on collaboratively with your cohort or different groups within the um, cohort that you present in person to the, to the professor. So um, that's kind of how it, it works with the, with the place-based sessions. And the uh, online sessions, are just, they're very interactive. As Mel has said, they're, they're, t um, they're, uh, they're not like recorded sessions. So you're on you're on the um, on Zoom with the professor with the entire class. We have the chat box going where we're asking different questions. We have a TA. Um, we're we're provide we're doing group presentations. We're having discussions, and it all happens um, in real time. And so it creates a a very interactive environment um, during the um, the 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 space sessions. Thank you so much, Naima. We're going to go a little bit more into detail to some of those things that she referenced in her answer. Um, so when we say place-based session, there's five of those that happen throughout the two years, as we mentioned. There's four that occur on our Duke University campuses and one that occurs down in DC. So the Duke University ones, like Naima mentioned, is our orientation session. During that session, we're here in the, in the on Duke University's Durham campus, um, but half the time we spend down at our Duke University Marine Lab campus in Beaufort. Um, and that's really where those students form the tight connections. We're staying in uh, cabins together, really getting to know one another and spending fill, days filled learning about environmental management. Um, also, during the, any of our place-based sessions, we're going to have course intros and course wrap-ups. Like Naima said, we think that's really critical to building those connections with the faculty. It allows you to put a face to the name, but also um, see how you all are going to collaborate throughout the academic year. Um, there, in, for incoming students, there'll be a December place-based session here in Durham again. I, once again, we cover lots of content, but mostly it's, it's our course intros and course wrap-ups. Then students return in the second year for the first half of orientation here in Durham. And the last session that students do is the place-based session here on campus for graduation where students are presenting on their leadership journey as well as doing leadership content to help prepare them for their, their time after the program, as well as graduating, which is a very exciting thing. In the December of second year, of their second year for this incoming cohort, our hallmark of the program is the leadership module where we spend time not only doing our course intros and course wrap-ups but reading meeting with a variety of leaders throughout the dc area and in, in different sectors i mean really digging deep into that leadership component of the program in addition to those we mentioned that there are extra place-based sessions that occur when um, students enroll in our elective courses um, right now we our list goes from students visiting Chile, Mexico, Hawaii, the Florida Keys, and Northern California. And aside from the fact that we want to, you all to meet the faculty and other students you're gonna be completing the coursework with, we want you to have opportunity to engage with the Duke University campus. So often we will schedule tours and encourage our students while they're visiting to check out all the amazing resources that are available to them as Duke students while they're here on campus. Um, and then also it gives an opportunity for students to engage with faculty, staff, and other other um, Duke and Nicholas School students. And so we try to schedule lots of social activities where students can go out and meet um, not only their faculty they're gonna be working with, but potentially some of the students on our campus program. The other thing that Naima mentioned is our space-based sessions. So as we said, we really like these to be highly interactive. On the screen, you can see the different ways that we engage students. Um, in the space-based session. So lots of times you'll have faculty 
who are going to have recorded lesson, lessons for you to watch outside of class. Um, that's important because we don't want our sessions to be lecture-based when you guys are all meeting together. We want them, we want that content to be delivered before students arrive. Um, also, every course will have a Sakai site, and that site is specialized to have all the resources our distance students could need um, while completing the program. It should be that home base for your course. All of our sessions are hosted through video web conferencing, which is really important. It allows our students to have their faces up and um, really robust chat conversations during the class sessions, as well as engaging one-on-one -on -one with the faculty teaching the class. Um, we have an online student guide so students know all the rules and the ins and outs of the program and the Duke policies. Also, all of our Duke, all of our Dell students have access to the library and to the same resources that students have on campus. If you want a book, I will mail you a book. Um, and so you have free access to the library just like all of our other students. And also email is really important in our in our Dell program because you guys are not here um, and often you're working during the day, we want to make sure that um, we are regularly communicating with you. So we'll rely heavily on email to do that. Other applications that our students have used um, is WhatsApp. That's a big thing for our, our, um, our second year students. It's a way for them to connect immediately, share resources and insight on, on class projects. Um, Zoom, students like to meet via Zoom, which is how we run our classes. And also Google Docs and Box for those, those group projects that they're working on. You probably heard me mention that um, Every student is going to take two to three courses per semester. Those courses generally run 60 to 90 minutes in length, and they're held on a weekly basis. Um, and those, so that would be our synchronous learning, so real time what's happening right now. And then for our asynchronous learning, students will have those, for, for instance, their pre recorded lectures, group projects, memos, and discussion boards that they participate in outside of class. In addition to this, there are monthly leadership calls, which are scheduled pretty, pretty early in advance so you know when those are happening. But during those sessions, students are able to meet with Maria Kingery, our leadership advisor, one-on-one, -on -one, um, and they tackle issues regarding what it's like to be an environmental leader today um, and teach some transferable skills that can help them carry them past the, the time in the program. These sessions are generally offered in the evening, Eastern Standard Time, so that we can accommodate all of the different time zones for the students enrolled in our program. On this screen, you can see a snapshot of what it will look like for the incoming cohort. Um, we follow the same academic calendar as Duke University, so generally when the campus is on break, so is the distance program. And the same academic policies apply as well for our distance students. So the core theme of this particular program is leadership. So we are really working to cultivate the next generation of environmental leaders in a wide variety of sectors. The person who leads our leadership component is Maria Kingery. She has worked in the clean energy sector for decades and is frequently called a pioneer. She brings real world experience as an employer, a business advisor, a nonprofit board member, and an environmental policy advocate. She has first hand experience overcoming the frustrations and fatigue of fighting the good fight against, often against the odds, and strives to support students by sharing what she has learned the hard way. She does this by conducting the monthly leadership calls, providing selected readings, actionable leadership tools, and often meeting one-on-one -on -one with students to talk about their leadership journey and help them reach their full potential. Maria works also with the students to solve real-time related issues related to their own leadership development and management within the environmental sector. What we've done is lead this or weave this theme throughout our program. So you'll often find in the course projects that are assigned that it will talk about issues that will utilize leadership skills that are being developed throughout the two years so that students are applying the projects in real time and practicing those leadership skills while they're working. Next, um, I want to talk about the hallmark of our program, which is our DC leadership module. So I mentioned this earlier, um, but this truly is the hallmark of the program because it provides a point of reference for students 
about their leadership development through individual leadings with, meetings with prominent leaders throughout various sectors. During the, student, during the session, students will lead discussions with these environmental leaders, and the sessions are very conversational. So the students are, have an opportunity to ask people who are outstanding leaders across various sectors what they've learned and during their leadership journey. People that we've met, met, met with include Ken Feinberg, a government appointed administrator of the BP Deepwater Horizon Disaster Victim Compensation Fund, Gina McCarthy, administrator of the Environmental Protection Agency, Larry Seltzer, president and CEO of the Conservation Fund, Mamie Parker, assistant director at the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and executive coach, fish and wildlife biologist. In addition to that, we also try to engage with environmental leaders in the government sector um, so that students can understand what it means to be an environmental leader within a government body. Thank you, Mel. Here we have a, just a brief idea of what a Dell MEM student looks like. Uh, first and foremost, they are established in fields that are directly related to the environment. That is very important to building the kind of cohort that we want where students can learn from each other. And so we deliberately recruit for students uh, that have experience, whatever it may be, as long as it is related to the environment. And it can be from the nonprofit space, it can be from uh, the government space, business and industry, you name it. We have students from a variety of backgrounds. They are also quantitatively and intellectually able to complete a graduate degree program at Duke. And so that is just to say uh, we screen all of our applicants to make sure that they can handle the rigor because. This is a program that is completed simultaneously with work requirements. And so we look for students who have demonstrated an ability to manage deadlines and to communicate well with others and to grasp the kind of material that they'll be required to comprehend uh, over the course of two years. And we also want people who are in leadership positions or if they're not already in leadership positions that they've demonstrated an ability to get there. So being recognized by their colleagues, by their supervisor, it's very important. Uh, we want people who are committed to advancing environmental causes in their organization. And finally, we're looking for folks that are seeking to update and add depth to their skills. Uh, this is a leadership program, uh, hence the name, hence all the information Mel was sharing with you earlier. And leadership requires a knowledge in a lot of different areas. Of course, you have to understand uh, the environmental side of that, but you also have to understand how to interact well with others and to inspire them. And so we see a lot of students that have already been doing that, but realize they're at a point in their career where they need that extra education or those extra conversations and leadership advice that they can get from the Dell MEM program. And so it is important when someone completes their application, especially their uh, statement of purpose, that they articulate these things to us. Thank you so much, Ben. So who are our Dell MEM students? On this slide, you can see these are, these are pro just an example of the many organizations our students work for um, and that our alumni work for now. And so we're really committed to, to making sure we're recruiting a diverse background um, or diverse range of students so that they can bring that background into the classroom. And um, we want to make sure that we do that because it's essential to that peer-to-peer -peer learning model. And I think a lot of our students have really positive things to say at the end of the program. They've, they've learned so much from one another because they're all working and coming from different sectors and therefore different perspectives. Additionally, we always try to recruit from a geographically diverse area. And so we try to make sure we're representing all regions of the United States as well as the international um, population of students we try to recruit. Um, so currently, our students have come from 32 states, eight countries, and, US, and two U.S. territories. And again, that diversity is really important because the different localities will have different perspectives on the environmental pressures and concerns, and that bring the international students will really bring that to our domestic populations and vice versa. And also, it provides an opportunity for alternative lessons and case studies in what environmental leadership and management means at a global scale. 
The diversity also allows our students to integrate real world experiences as they learn to manage group projects with one another and further develop leadership and management skills within the classroom. Thank you, Mel. And here we have a slide that shows you the demographics of our cohorts over the years. So this is averages. Um, as you can imagine, we have so much diversity, you can certainly find your fit within these different categories. We have great representation. So please have a look at this data that's displayed on the screen while I say that we are very intentional in the selection of our cohorts. Uh, we look across years and types of experiences, uh, where students are on the career ladder, their personal experiences, the sector they're in, and more. Uh, one of the great strengths of the Dell MEM program is this very intentional development of each cohort. Uh, the learning and the teaching between the students and the faculty is encouraged and woven into the learning experience. The Dell program creates a unique opportunity for working professionals to engage and challenge and explore amongst each other, and they ultimately bring their strengths to each class. And next we'll talk a little bit about the admissions process and what the requirements are for that. Uh, so Mel, if you'll advance the next slide, we'll look at um, the different components of the application. Um, one being the five years of environmentally related work experience, and that is postgraduate experience. That is a minimum. We have students that have uh, much more experience than that, um, 21 plus years in fact. Uh, so we have students from all different points in their career that want to come back and get the education. Uh, we also have the online application form, which consists of three letters of recommendation, a professional resume, an essay or statement of purpose, an employer sponsor letter, and the application fee, which can be weighed if you're an alum of City Year, Teach for America, Peace Corps, or AmeriCorps, or are active duty or veteran military. Uh, one point about the employer sponsor letter, this is not a financial sponsorship. It's a letter that states your employer is aware of your participation in the program, all that it entails, and that they will grant you the time off and opportunity to focus for the required place-based sessions. Next, we do a Skype interview with all of our applicants um, and all transcripts from colleges and universities attended are required. If your first name language is not English, we also require the TOEFL or IELTS. Uh, you can submit unofficial scores at the time of application, but prior to a decision being released, we must have official scores submitted to us. We can accept TOEFL scores electronically and we accept IELTS score reports that you would attach during the application process. Please note that the GRE is not required for the Dell program. To apply, please visit our website and follow the links that are on the webpage. Uh, you can see a screenshot. This is our website as of a few days ago. I think it'll look the same when you apply, but you see a button that's in green that says apply to the master's programs. That will take you directly to our online application. It should be pretty self-explanatory how to proceed through that, but of course, anytime if you have any questions, we just ask that you let us know and we'll uh, take care of um, walking you through that. And if there's any problems, we'll make sure we get those resolved as well. Uh, note that we have two deadlines. We have the priority deadline, which is on December 16th, and the regular deadline on January 17th. Uh, we often get questions about the difference in the two. The biggest difference is if you apply by the priority deadline, you stand to hear back sooner, which can be immensely beneficial when you're planning out year uh, things for your organization, when you're trying to uh, make arrangements with your employer. So we do recommend that if you can to apply by the priority deadline, but please do know that uh, we want you to apply when you feel most confident in your application. And that's to say, do not rush to submit your application just to say you've submitted it. If you miss a priority deadline, that's okay. Please do not worry. And finally, as we wrap up the slides, we'll get into some Q&A in just a moment. But um, I wanted to let you know there's several different ways you can stay connected with us. Uh, first, we encourage you to follow us on social media, so Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. It will help you get a feel for the school, what our students are doing, what the faculty are doing and what the staff are doing as well. It's just a great way to see what's going on here in Durham and in Beaufort, uh, no matter where you're at in the country. And they have some pretty cool photos too. Um, and I have a few that are in my screensavers. <laughs> you never know what you're gonna come across on the social media. And our website's also a great all-around resource. 
if you'd like to meet us in person or know when another virtual recruiting event will be happening, uh, you can check out the events page. The link is there. Uh, we update that regularly. So uh, you'll see we have the DC Open House coming up in November, for instance, and we have five more Dell virtual information sessions between now and the beginning of January 2020. And if you haven't already, please create your prospective student profile. If you have one, um, you can continuously update that. That allows us to send you information and invitations that are specific to your interest and your location. So we want to send you stuff that's relevant and timely. And the best way to do that is to know what your interests are at the moment. And also, if anyone would like to connect to a current student or alum, uh, please let me know. We can always arrange for that. Um, I'm not sure if Rebecca has joined us now or not. Um, if she's here, we'll hear from her in a moment, I'm sure. But if you have any questions directly for her, again, she's the director of the program. Uh, we can put you in touch with her. She's happy to speak with you as well. So at this point, hi. Sorry, Ben. I'm, I'm here. Can you hear me okay? Hi. Yes, we can. Yeah. Welcome. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Rebecca Vigil. I'm the director of the Deep Environmental Leadership Program, and I am demonstrating our versatility for mid-career professionals right now, as I am actually traveling, uh, in the middle of traveling, flight delays, et cetera. And um, I think one of the themes of the Dell program has to be like life happens. Um, you know, we understand that not only are our students professionals with, you know, day jobs, but they often have family and other kinds of commitments. Um, and in a lot of ways, we end up being a support group for one another as we navigate, you know, adding this significant, you know, program onto our already very full plate. It's one of the things I most appreciate about directing the program, that I get to interact with people who, who are um, sort of juggling a lot. And I think our, our program does a, a pretty good job of being flexible when it needs to be, um, like having people call from the side of the road while their kids are in the back of the car, like I'm doing right now. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions um, during the last few minutes of the call, um, but also I want you to feel um, free to send me an email or give me a call if you want to discuss your particular situation in, in greater detail, um, I would be happy to do so. It is really one of the, my great joys as a faculty member to direct this program. Um, and I think that I've, I've heard it mentioned a couple of times that the cohorts that these students create, um, you know, we admit the students and then they sort of take it from there in terms of their community building. And it's just a really, really um, interesting and fun and certainly rich experience to be able to direct the program. So welcome to the session and again, happy to take any, any questions now or later. Thank you, Rebecca. And uh, please take her up on that. Um, she's a great source of knowledge about the program and we appreciate the passion that she has for the program. Uh, it looks like the majority of people on the call are able to see the screen, uh, but I will say we, it looks like we have one uh, voice only caller. So. If you have a question, I'll unmute you now, um, and then I'll give you another opportunity at the end as well, uh, just because we want to make sure that you're represented as well. So uh, it looks like our 415 caller, um, if you have any questions, actually, it looks like you'll have to unmute yourself. Do you, if you have any questions, feel free to unmute and speak up. Just be mindful that there are others, and please do not talk over them. Um, for now, if you want to raise your hand and ask questions, you can do that, or um, you can just start typing into the chat box. Uh, to kick things off, it looks like we had some good interest in our travel courses. So, Michelle and Naima, would you like to talk about your experience in our travel courses? Uh, sure, I, I can. Um, I really enjoyed um, my last, my first year at Duke. Um, I took two travel courses. Uh, the first one I took during spring break was community-based environmental management. Uh, with a case study in Oaxaca, Mexico. So during the semester, in the beginning of the semester, we go over um, the different types of community-based environmental management being practiced by indigenous communities in Oaxaca, Mexico. And then during spring break, we actually go visit these communities and NGOs that are using the natural resources to improve the social um, structure of these indigenous communities and provide alternate livelihoods um, and really uh, utilize the, the social structure of Mexico and their land tenure and their, commu their community structure to um, create, just create a, a beautiful livelihood for these, the folks living in the community. And um, at the end of the semester, I did a global policy 
travel course where we went to Geneva and um, met with various UN programs and NGOs that are trying to just tackle the largest problems that the world is facing from disaster relief to um, in the energy crisis and climate change. And um, it was just a really good um, one week snapshot into such a, just such an important institution that I, I didn't have access to before uh, joining the Dell program. So uh, I really enjoyed both of those courses and I think they're, um, they definitely have um, shaped, just shaped my learning experience moving forward and I'm excited to see what classes I'll be able to take in the spring. Um, hi, this is Michelle. Um, I did also did the Oaxaca trip, the Mexico trip um, that Naima is talking about, which I concur with everything that she mentioned. Um, I also had the opportunity to travel uh, with Rebecca on a one week um, course uh, in Florida. It was um, uh, um, uh, ecology restoration uh, course and we, we did some great things down in Florida. Um, right in my old backyard, which I never knew some of that stuff existed. So that was a really great eye opener for me. Um, and then the, I think my second year is when our cohort traveled to Chile and uh, we had the opportunity to meet with some of the, some of the organizations and agencies um, there in the country that are, are working on their sustainability practices. And that was a really interesting an amazing experience as well, um, you know, kind of looking at some of the models that another country is using and trying to figure out best ways to bring some of those models back to the United States um, and implement them here. Um, and I, I would highly recommend, you know, if you have the chance to, uh, to take those, don't, you know, someone asked the question about expenses when it comes to those travel trips. Um, at the end of the day, and I understand that everybody has their own, um, you know, monetary uh, situation going on, but if you can swing it, I, I highly recommend it because um, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity um, that you probably won't get again. Um, and it opens up a lot of doors, um, you know, as, as Na Naima said about the Mexico trip, um, that was something that I didn't realize I was so passionate about. And it's something that I'm actually pursuing now um, for, um, you know, my next career path in terms of community-based environmental management. And had I not had that exposure, I never would have pursued that. So. Thank you so much, Michelle. I'm going to respond also to one of the questions we had about the travel expenses. Naeem is correct. So the, typically the students um, will take out aid um, at the beginning of that term to help cover their travel expenses. Um, typically the courses that do have travel um, will have some component of the course expenses will be covered through a course fee um, and then travel to and from those locations are usually covered by the student themselves um, mostly because people are traveling from all over different geographic areas um, and sometimes our students will even stay longer in the countries they're traveling to if their work permits so that they can get a little bit more out of the trip um, and that is included in our estimated cost of attendance we build that in so you can kind of know what to expect um, if you choose to participate in a travel course or not thank you and Michelle and Naima again if you would please uh, from an admissions angle this is an important question I think we should get out there uh, how did you approach your employer to ask them to sponsor your participation in the program Um, I can go first. I um, I actually brought up the program when I was applying uh, during my mid-year evaluation with my supervisor, and I was talking to him about um, the things that I was trying to accomplish within my program and where I thought I had gaps. And um, you know, I, I I talked to him about this program, and he ended up writing me one of my letters of recommendation. Uh, so I, I definitely approached it um, earlier than just um, getting the the sponsor letter signed. Uh, I think you have to talk to your supervisor about it, but I think if you're a manager, it's also a subject you kind of have to broach with your team. Your time becomes limited in the program, and uh, I think a lot of us are go-getters, and we spend a, a lot of time, and we're very passionate about our jobs, and 
um, while you're in the program, there has to be a, a healthy medium. So I definitely talked with my team about it too, about what I was um, undertaking and just made sure that I had the support of my organization. And they were, they were very, um, they were very supportive. And I think immediately they saw the results of the program, uh, which made them even more supportive as we, as we move forward into my, my second year. I kind of had a, an opposite approach, um, sort of by accident than Naima did. Um, I, um, it, in the Coast Guard, uh, and in most of the military uh, branches, it, for officers, it's expected that you always are working on some sort of professional development, continuation, whatever the case may be. And in my case, um, I had been um, going down another path, and then um, that didn't pan out and um and and i knew that i wanted to fall back to my environmental roots and so um when researching schools this came up and i actually didn't know about the program until december of the year before i started um and so so my my application process was a little stressful for me as i was trying to quickly pull everything together but uh, but in in terms of talking with my um, supervisors and things like that it was um, it was it wasn't necessarily something that was going to be um, you know a challenge for them to to support because again it was expected that we pursue some sort of advanced education um, and so so much like Naima though uh, you know it did require some you know some lots of communication um, with supervisors and, and team members to ensure that, you know, um, if I had a class that I had to get online for that night, that someone would stand by for me for duty purposes or things like that. So, so it's, it's a new routine that you have to kind of get used to. And um, as long as you're, I found that as long as you're communicating with the folks that are you're working with, um, then typically, um, you know, why wouldn't your, your, uh, the folks around you support what you're trying to do. Thank you so much, Michelle. Aaron has a really great question. I think that kind of flows well from um, your guys's responses. Can you talk about how you tailored your coursework um, to complement what you do in your job? So whether it was a research project or written report, um, I know a lot of you have have done that. Uh, Naima specifically mentioned that it has helped her professionally because of the, the work that she's doing at the program. So Michelle or Naima, do one of you want to respond to that? Sure. Um, I can jump in there. Um, so I actually, I pursued this program because I wanted to look at things for life after the Coast Guard. And so I actually, part of my approach to my co coursework was to pursue other, I guess, um, landscapes in terms of the environmental uh, industry. And so, you know, obviously my background is the maritime industry and the marine environment. And so I didn't know a whole lot about land use and forestry and things like that. And so I jumped on those projects as an opportunity to, to learn more um, about those different um, areas. And and in some cases, when there were projects um, that that were in line with the work that I was doing, uh, it did make things a little bit easier. My MP was based solely off of um, policy that I had been heavily following and involved with throughout my career in the Coast Guard. And so that made things a little bit easier because I had background knowledge on the information already. And I could work on a lot of those things during the workday because they were in some way work related. I kind of um, had the same um, trajectory as Michelle. I really wanted to broaden my knowledge um, of environmental management as a whole and um, learn more besides the wildlife conservation niche that I was currently in. And so uh, my first year I took um, a lot of different courses in a lot of different disciplines that I, I thoroughly enjoy and I'm finding everything sort of coalescing right now in this fall semester. Uh, my organization is actually going through a reorganization um, and it 
aligns perfectly with um, my fall curriculum of program management. And so in the, in the course, we have to come up with a strategic plan. So um, for, my, for my, the course, I'm coming up with a strategic plan for my wildlife inspection program um, to lead us through this organization. I'm also taking a communications planning course with Rebecca currently. And um, I'm coming up with the communications plan to unroll to my wildlife inspectors about the new reorganization and what it's going to look like and making sure we get buy-in for it and we don't have a, um, a dip in retention in our, um, in, our, um, in, our, in our wildlife inspection program. So uh, this, yeah, this semester, it's very, it's very closely aligned to my current position and um, it makes it a lot easier in terms of uh, a lot of the projects I'm able to work on during during my workday because it is completely applicable um, to my to my position and uh, a lot of the products that are reviewed in class uh, peer reviewed in class by my cohort and um, you know looked at by the professors these are some of the items that I'll be turning into my senior management team so um, it works it works very it's working very very well this semester. Thank you both. That's very interesting and again a great example of the flexibility of the program and the creative approach that our students can take to fulfill the requirements of their job but also of the academics of the Dell program and it looks like we're going to wrap up here uh, we'll end with one final question and that is what was the aha moment when you knew you made the right decision to join the Dell program I can take this one first. Uh, it was very clear, my aha moment. Uh, we had a, a port visit by the Secretary General of the UN CITES Convention. And uh, I've been a bit of a CITES groupie since I joined the Fish and Wildlife Service. Um, and so for the Secretary General to come to my field office and to get to um, spend the day with her, it's actually a woman now, she's actually a Nick School graduate, um, was really exciting. And during the day, just the conversations I was able to have with her we're just robust and rich and, um, you know, talking about environmental valuation and payment for ecosystem services and livelihoods and indigenous communities in terms of wildlife conservation and different countries, how do they utilize their natural resources. It was a conversation that I, I probably couldn't have had before starting the Dell program. Um, at that depth where we're really just talking about the root the root of a lot of these problems and misunderstandings and issues and um being able to interface with such a sort of high level person uh, who's also a nick school graduate and just to have a, an amazing day at work um it was it was it was i can attribute it at least 95 percent to the dell program i would um i would have to say there were so many aha moments <laughs> throughout the program um but um you know i would i think the first one that sort of helped me ease into the program was um, during our orient orientation week when we met uh, the second years. And I kind of, I felt a little out of place um, initially because I thought, well, you know, what am I doing here? You know, military persons, usually the least likely person that you would find in an environmental field. But, um, when I sat through and everybody introduced themselves and I realized what a huge group of diverse individuals were sitting in that room and I realized what we all, we all had one common goal um, of, you know, trying to be better and trying to work together to, um, you know, just to, to really make things better for everyone. And, and, um, and so that was sort of my first aha moment that, you know, just continued to expand throughout the, the program and continues throughout, you know, even after graduation there, I still have aha moments that, yeah, that was a good thing that I did. <laughs> thank you, Michelle. And thank you, Naima. And on behalf of everyone who's in attendance, thank you to all the presenters and panelists. And this has been a very good information session. And I do encourage anyone that has any additional questions to reach out to any of us. Uh, the information has been added to the group chat. Uh, so you can see that on the screen, email addresses. There's also a contact us page on the website where you can request more information if you're not already on our mailing list. Um, if you just have a general admissions questions, you can email admissions at nicholas.duke.edu. 
email Melissa, Rebecca, uh, Michelle and Naima, if, if they want to reach you, I'm assuming they could email you or reach out to you on LinkedIn as well. Uh, so please don't be a stranger. Please stay in touch. And we look forward to seeing your application soon. Take care, everyone. Have a good afternoon.